Hey there, Ralph Garman here. Thanks so much for checking out this free edition of The Ralph Report. If you like what you hear, do me a favor. Subscribe to The Ralph Report so we can put some fun in your ears five days a week. And you can listen for as little as $3 a month. So subscribe today so you don't miss out on any of the fun. Go to patreon.com slash The Ralph Report and sign up. Welcome to The Ralph Report with Ralph Garman. Well, hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to the middle of the week. It is Wednesday, July 24th. Welcome to The Ralph Report. I, of course, am your old podcast pal, Ralph Garman. Sitting here in the Batcave with me is the vice host himself, Mr. Eddie Pence. Hey, everybody. Have you recovered from Comic-Con yet, Eddie? Slowly. Slowly your legs surely. working again? The, your hammy's all right? The blister's healing. Good, man. Things are going with... How are your squeaky shoes? Still squeaky. Still, squeaky. Still sque- squeakier. <laughs> oh, good. It's really annoying. I hate to uh, suggest this. <laughs> what? Maybe it's time to uh, retire those shoes. I might. They, they or had, take them back or some, they, something. They had a good brief run. But Why live like that? I don't know. It's, it's, not really, a, it's not a good thing. I hear myself coming. So I bet you do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to have you joining us today, kids. Speaking of Comic-Con, a little bit of uh, last Comic-Con business to handle before we move on from Comic-Con 2019. Uh, you may remember that the good people at Jada Toys were kind enough to give me three out of their 300. There were only 300 of them made. The uh, Comic-Con limited edition black chrome Batman, the animated series Batmobiles. Big die cast motherfuckers with uh, just gorgeous. And they had a little Batman figure that came with it. Anyway, they gave me three of them to use as I wished in a uh, a promotion, which was very kind of them. And what we decided to do was... Uh, offer it up to anybody who became a new four-star general in the Garmy. So that's the promotion we ran all last week, and I'm finally happy to say we've got the full list of brand-new four-star Garmy generals here in my sweaty little hand, uh-huh. and we have made our choice that's of what the that three is. lucky winners. Yeah, but before I do uh-huh. announce the winners, I did want to give special thanks to everybody who signed up as a four-star general over the past week. It is a uh, it's a big deal. I know I get that. That is not lost on me. And I wanted to thank each and every one of them personally for their support of the Ralph Report because it's folks like these who keep the show going. Keep the little show going. So that's what I just said. Keep the show going. I said little show. I threw little. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed the little. Should I say big? No, okay. it's fine. It is. Well, it's little. It's a little we mom are. and pop shop. We're, so a, we're the little us, engine that could. Keeps this little show going. Chugging up the hill. Right. So these are our brand new four star generals. I salute you, Calvin Weir. Thank you, Calvin. OJ Costello, Juan Arroyo, Jeremy Norman, Rick Aguirre, Robert Wiggins, Penn Seng, Stephen. This is going to be a tough one. Stephen <laughs> Zephia, I believe. C Z E P H Y H A. Wow. Good yeah. for you. Zephia. I would have butchered that I way believe. worse. Zephia. It's either Zephia or Zephia. Oh, either way, Stephen. He would have gotten an initial. That's what he would have gotten. Manny did not sign in with his uh, his uh, last name. Oh, it's just Manny. Manny, you know who you are. He Thank does. you, Manny, for being part of the four star generalship. Travis Mackin. Ryan Jones, Russell Ackerman, Anthony Eisenhower, John Homer. I think it's John. I think it's just a misspelling here. J-O-H-M. Or maybe it's Jom. Jom? Or Yom. Yom. Yom Homer. I bet it's Yom Homer. Yom Homer. That's a great name. (laughs) Olaf Vasquez. That's a great name, too. Matt Benson, Carl Erickson, Rebecca Dibble, Oscar Mendez, Nico Brown, Raul... What? Hmm? Nico. I met Nico. Nico came to my comedy special. Oh, my goodness. In D.C., yeah. Nico Brown. Yeah. Uh, Raul? No, nah, it's not Raul at all. It's Raul, I'm sure, in SoCal. Uh, Dylan Anderson, Stephen Martin, Jason Everling, Peter W.G., and Jenny Melton. You are our brand new four-star generals, and welcome. Thank you so much for your enormous support, truly from the bottom of my heart. And now I want to announce, we just, uh, we gave everybody, all these names got a number. Okay. Threw the numbers in a hat. Yeah. And literally, I picked out you three did. numbers. Yes. Okay. It was it was as random as could possibly make it to make it uh, fair to everyone. Because some of these folks are brand new subscribers to the show in general. Yeah. Just signed up as four stars. And many of these folks are uh, got, previous got subscribers promoted. that uh, <laughs> gave themselves a field promotion and went up there to four-star general. So I wanted everyone to have an even opportunity. And here are 
the big three winners who will be receiving in the mail from me a uh, limited edition out of only 300 made the San Diego Comic Con limited edition Batmobiles from Jada Toys. Here we go. Juan Arroyo. Congratulations, Juan. Yeah, you Juan. have won yourself a Batman, the animated series Batmobile, thanks to Jada Toys. Anthony Eisenhower, you too will be receiving one of these beautiful Batmobiles. And lastly, Jenny Melton. Jenny Melton, you are our third winner. Those are the winners of the three Batmobiles that we Congratulations. have. Congratulations. eBay that shit. All. Do not eBay it. <laughs> Hold it close forever and cherish it as not only something of the bat, but uh, a little something from, from yours truly as well. So thanks, everybody, for your support. Thanks, you guys, for joining in. And I hope uh, I hope the show itself is also enjoyable enough for you Try to, to make that four-star promotion worth it make all that worthwhile absolutely all right it's wednesday july 24th and today's show is going to be a good one because on the counter you want to know why you want to know why i do because it's <laughs> chock full of entertainment including on wednesdays you know very special day here wednesdays are uh oh boy wednesdays are uh, one hit wonder you got that right it's one hit wonder wednesday and it's one of the rare cases where we've already announced what we're going to be talking yeah, about this today. Is, this is more therapeutic for you. It is. Anything. I'm going to get it all out of my system. Face your demons. We're going to do a deep dive into they're coming to take me away. Ha ha, <laughs> he he, ho ho. <laughs> Smash hit song from 1966 that used to terrorize me as a small child. And I'm sure by the time I'm done... It'll terrorize you, too. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> so you want to spread the fear instead of resolve it. I want to share it. I want to share the load because it's easier to Terrible. carry if everyone has a shoulder underneath it. Mm. Uh, lots of good stuff. But what, what we want to do to kick things off, you know we love it when you guys reach out to us. Love it when you email. Best address for that is ralph at theralphreport.com or eddie or steve at that same email address. You can reach us on socials as well, or you can do what many choose to do, dial up the Ralph Report hotline. That phone number you know by now is 1833. Hi, Ralph. <laughs> and of course, if you happen to live abroad, if you are in uh, Europe, let's say, or Australia, or someplace where that number does not work, we always suggest you go on Skype and use their keypad, and then you can reach us. Uh, that way. I love to listen to the voicemails. I listen to each and every one of them, and then I, gra then I grab a handful of them. It's easy for me to say. These teeth, these new teeth I got are just... Um, we grab a handful of them, we put them here at the top of the show in a segment called Garmy on the Line. The telephone is ringing. Remember when Bear called? Yeah. And I thought he might have been a real bear? Yes. I said, wouldn't it be cool he if was Bear actual was bear. just dialing from the woods and he was an actual bear that listened to the yeah, show? out of a cave. I would have loved that. As a young man who adored Winnie the Pooh and believed you could have a best friend who was a bear, I'd like to think that Bear was real. <laughs> well, imagine my joy when he called back. <laughs> This is Bear giving you a call back. Yes, I am an actual bear. Um, most of us can talk just like the talking dog you had on the show a couple of months ago. Uh, I, I work up in Northern California in my grandfather's business. We import and export uh, picnic baskets, uh, as he used to say. And uh, I walk around with a hat and tie and no pants. Anyways, just thought I'd clear that up. Ralph, doing a great job. Eddie? All right, bye. <laughs> bye, Bear. That's Yogi's grandson. Oh, wow. Picnic baskets. Picnic baskets. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, hey picnic basket. <laughs> hey. I'm smarter than the average bear. Hey. That was one of my first impressions when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. I used to slay him at the oh, lunch I table. I bet you uh, killed in first grade. In uh, the elementary school. Oh, oh, yeah. Scooby and Yogi were the closers. Either one of those would just tear the <laughs> roof just, off the, the joint. Was... <laughs> uh, also, we have a little update call from Corey. I felt bad for Corey. 
Corey was the man yesterday. I dressed down a little bit who dared to say that Survivor was a one hit wonder band. Oh, yeah. You gave him the, I the Tiger. You gave him a laundry list of I reasons. just had to explain things to him. I had to set him straight. Yeah. I think more for his good than for mine. No, quite you frankly. don't want him going around with that knowledge. You don't want to embarrass yourself no. when you're at a party someplace. You go, oh, my favorite one hit wonder? I the Tiger. Yeah. And then like that needle across yeah. the yeah. record. <laughs> And the place gets silent right. and all eyes turn towards you. Better here than in public. You don't want to be that no. guy, Corey. So Corey called called back, and uh, I like a man who can admit <laughs> when he's wrong. Hey, Ralph. It's Corey from North Carolina. Ooh, I'm still recovering from that smackdown about Eye of the Tiger. Mm-hmm. Uh, had to call in for a quick explanation, not an excuse, an, an explanation. I know you expect more out of your army, uh, but... So, you know, I grew up in the 80s, I listened to a lot of music, and I had no fucking idea who sang the songs. And right. I still don't, obviously. Uh, so when I thought about Eye of the Tiger, I had to look it up. And of course, you rely on the internet. And we always know the internet is never wrong. Right. So I figured out the survivor thing, and I did some combination of search terms and hit a link to a VH1 list of the top, whatever, 100 greatest uh, one-hit wonders, and Eye of the Tiger was on that. So, yeah, I fucked it up. I got a little insight into what it's like to be Eddie. And uh, let me tell you, it hurt. Right. Uh, unfortunately, some of us weren't, you know, weren't that cool back in the 80s. Uh, you know, while Eddie was off uh, finger finger banging the hot chicks, yeah. uh, I was at home <laughs> playing D&D and eating my mango and tapioca. But right. anyway, just wanted to explain what happened there. I'm going to try it hard next time. Uh, but it does lead to the conclusion, and I had never thought about this before, but it's possible that everything you find on the internet may not be true. I know that's shocking. I'm going to try to look into that a little bit more, and I'll get back to you. Till next time, LMB. Corey, all is forgiven. I don't blame you. I blame VH1 and their bogus list. I can't list. believe they, VH1 got that. So that, that was just to grab a headline, a clickbait. I'll have you know, it, Eye of the Tiger gets bandied about quite a bit as a false one-hit wonder. It's not the first time I had to set oh, someone really? straight about that. Yeah. So <laughs> VH1, shame on you, VH1. Leading people wrong. Yeah. And uh, real, just as an aside, Corey mentioned in there the uh, finger-banging thing. <laughs> I think uh, it's best for all of us if we just move forward and never, never... Speak of it well, again, well, because well. Eddie saying the words finger banging, <laughs> unacceptable what on so many about? levels. Because it's just it's, we've it's, all it's, been there. It's the gross thing. No, it's not. It's and a special it, moment between two young people. It's you and saying that two and young people. Uh, and by the way, the moment I am not alone in my feelings about <laughs> this. Hi, this is Sam in San Antonio. If you could get Eddie Pence to never say finger banging <laughs> again, that would be. <laughs> Super LMB. Yeah, we're going to work on that for uh, you, Darren. <laughs> Even some of Eddie Pence's biggest fans <laughs> had <laughs> shivers run down their spine during yesterday's show, mm. during that moment. Uh, Tammy. Oh, Tammy. Tammy, who loves Eddie so much that she took him to goddamn Disneyland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tammy, yeah, who yeah. once did an internet search for, uh, using the words Eddie Pence shirtless in the search <laughs> engine. She called in. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Eddie. Tammy here. Um, I'm the one that searched for Eddie Shirtless. And, you know, after listening to him say finger bang as much as he just did, I really regret my Google search. Mm-hmm. I'm a little grossed out by myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wish I could take it back. It just kind of gave me the heebie. Anyway, love you. Mean it. Bye. Tammy, I feel your pain. Oh, come on, Tammy. And I, like I said, I just think <laughs> it's on. best if we all put this behind us. Uh, it's an ugly chapter in the Ralph Report I history. I'm and proud of what I said. we need to just let this long national nightmare oh, be over and just try to move forward, rebuild the best that we can. I have no regrets. Let's build bridges, not walls, people. Okay? Um... It's been a, quite a week for Eddie. Eddie was also on the wrong side of history when it came oh. to uh, the Pied Piper. This I am poor on the right working side man. Of history. This poor working man gets oh. hired to do a job, and then an entire town stiffs him what is due him. And because he reacts as anyone would with with, <laughs> with kidnapping children, with taking their kids. Oh my god! Um, oh, Eddie insane. Eddie got really furious, oh. and a lot of people saw this. First of all. As as the wrong-headed thought that it oh, is, it is, but not. more importantly, as an opportunity. 
Dan Wright, four-star general. I'd love to hear Drunk Eddie talk about the Pied Piper, please. Thank you. Dear Ralph, how many requests have you gotten for Drunk Eddie's thoughts on the Pied Piper? Mm. However many you have, you need to add one. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Eddie. It's Eric from Clearwater. Oh, my God. Please. Pied Piper. Next, Drunk Eddie's thoughts. Right. I'm losing my shit over here. It's hilarious. LMB. Well, find your shit, sir, because it's now that time. <laughs> I can't like, see that close up. something a foot from your face. It's gross. Eddie's drunk thoughts. I'm fine. Yeah, my teeth are working. <laughs> if you heard the show, you know the battle that went on between uh, right and wrong versus whether the Pied Piper... Really, it, it, you know, and it was Wrong. olden times, too. It was olden times. It was like some eye for an eye kind of shit going on. That's you know not I mean? eye for an eye. It kind of is. It is not eye for an it's eye. A, it's an eye for a kid. Oh, my God. So uh, if you know anything about Eddie Pence, he'll, he'll go on a bit. And then when you take him and you slow him down by half speed and you imagine him sitting in a bar, well, then you get the magic that is drunk Eddie's thoughts. Here we go. Eddie Pence's <laughs> take on the Pied Piper. <laughs> Maybe they should have paid him, He Eddie. should have just brought the rats back. <laughs> no. No, that's that's screwed that up. Hardly a lesson you learned. You don't have children. Hardly a lesson okay. learned. You if don't... your kid goes missing, let me stop. Let me tell you, that sticks with you. That's a lesson. At that least give them a chance you. to go. Oh, we, we're bad here. Bring us our children back. Here's them. He just gave to him a chance. with the kids. He gave him a chance when he said, "Pay me what you said." And you what's would he pay doing me. with all these kids? Right. Okay, this now screw that dude. I'm guessing he's screw making screw that dude. He's making uh, some rat hybrids. Red, that dude's out of kids. He's a no. What he's doing? He's kids. turning them into rats, and he's going to another town and scamming <laughs> them out of money. Yeah, I don't think because he leads the rats and on purpose. How is this now the Pied Pipers? problem how is he scamming he probably people? originally put the rats in the town he trained them to lead to there's oh. no evidence to prove there's, that oh that he good. put this the rats in the town <laughs> there you go uh, shady as, as fuck, fuck. <laughs> Fuck this dude. <laughs> Fuck that dude. Oh. Yeah, it's magical. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who called in. You too can be featured here on Garmy <laughs> on the Line. You just got to do one simple thing. Call me around. It's the number everyone's talking about. Call me right now at one eight three three. Someone wrote in and suggested the Pied Piper was kind of like uh, the olden times child protective services because those parents were all no. deadbeats and horrible people. No. And so the Pied Piper was actually taking them out of a bad situation. Oh, no. Probably saved those kids. Right, right. By taking uh -huh. them out of Hamlin. Right. Hamlin was a bullshit town. It was a shady right. town. It's bullshit. It was shady he, as fuck. What's as he you feed them, rats? Yeah, he can make, he's got he's, he's got a, a shady, farm. He's, he's got a whole a farm. Shady dude. That when dude. he's not pied piping, he's uh, uh, pied farming. That seems like he's a, the pied farmer it's as a well. Big fucking scam. What is pied, by the I way? I don't know. Peed, pied, peed, pied. No, it's pied. He's a pied. He's the pied piper. P e i d. P e i d. He's pied. the pied piper. I just don't understand what makes him pied. What is pied? I. Just said, I don't know what pied is. Is it a town? The whole conversation it, started because town? I said, I don't know what pied is. Are you trying to make a brand new Drunk Eddie's Thoughts <laughs> as we speak? <laughs> and now, now I need to know what pied is. So unfortunately, please hold. We know your time is valuable. Thank you for holding. Someone will be with you as soon as possible. And we're back. And now we know what pied means. What? Pied means of two colors. Uh -huh. It's usually used for livestock, like a, a horse's coat 
or a cow. If right. you have a, like a solid horse, a solid brown horse, okay. if one has two colors, if it's like black and white blotched, you yes. know, that's considered a pied horse. Okay. So it means having two colors. And a, apparently in the original poem about the Pied Piper, he was famous for wearing a long coat, half of a which... A trench coat, like a freak he is. No, that's I'm what sure it, is. it was a, a flasher, too. I'm sure it was a decorative sure. duster of some I'm kind. I'm sure he was naked under it. And it was half freak. yellow and half red. Ah, so <laughs> because he had Caution two, and stop. Because he had two the, colors, yeah. um, he was known as the Pied Piper because he wore two bold colors. He's a freak. He is in a trench coat. He's a guy who got a screwed freak. over. He's a freak in a trench coat by the man. Fuck that dude. Um, anyway, so there you go. Now it's time for us to take a look in the rearview mirror throughout the sands of time. <laughs> what happened on this day in history, July twenty fourth? Ralph's about to solve another mystery Like is today the day some dude invented Listerine Or maybe a tyrant king married his sister queen Who knows, every day seems to be an anniversary The Garmy's rubbing Ralph's lamp So grant our wishes, please And tell us what went down this day in history July 24th on this day in 1534 Jacques Cartier landed in Canada and claimed it for France. Oh. He said, oh, oh. all that I can see here, I claim for France. It is all French now. French Canadian. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, all of Canada was French yeah. at one time. No, it's just Quebec. Uh, I believe they are a uh, unique bastion in terms of the provinces. Right. Yes. Okay. 1567, Mary, Queen of Scots, mm -hmm. was forced to abdicate from her position as the Queen of Scotland, and her one-year-old son became King James the Sixth of Scotland. Did he really rule from one years old? He on? was the king at one. At one, who who did who made shit like happen? After, uh, they had like, regents who right. would raise him and also make the decisions until yeah. he was old enough to do that himself. I if any of them tried to kill him. He was a one-year-old king. By the way, he was kind of a late bloomer because his mother, Mary Queen of Scots, she took the throne at six days. When her father died. Wow. So anybody apparently could be I a guess. king or queen back in those days. In 1832, Benjamin Bonneville led the very first wagon train across the Rocky Mountains. That's whatever a, that you do in your life, horrific. whatever you do in your life, you will never do anything as hard as Benjamin Bonneville oh. did with a team of of horses and wagons and families looking for a new life, and he got over the goddamn Rocky Mountains. That's impressive. Went through the Wyoming South Pass there. That's how he got through. That's but impressive. Come on. Dude. Think about the people who founded this land. I would have just stopped before the mountain. We are <laughs> like, just, this we're just at garbage now. compared to them. Oh, we're so uh, weak. <laughs> 1851, the good folks of Britain abolished their window tax, which I thought was very kind of them. Wait, there was a window tax? There was. It was kind of like an a uh, income tax. They would tax you on how many windows your house had. So naturally, rich people had more windows. Had more windows. Okay. Poor people maybe had like one window. Right. So if the more windows you had, the more money you had to, to pay. That's a good and so window. Britain said, this may be a dumb way to tax people. <laughs> so they abolished it on this day in 1851. <laughs> You know what a lot of rich people would do, by the way? And this is not a joke. They would, if they knew the tax collector was coming, they would wall up their windows. They would literally brick up a, the places where their windows that, would go. Is that the first tax loophole? I guess so. <laughs> and then they would wait for them to go, and then they would take the bricks out and then repaint the glass and everything and put it in. So wow. Tax cheats even then. Wow. Probably everybody in Hamlin did it that would way. You, why would you not board up every window? Because you're just supposed to owe the taxes right. that you're that you're that you're doing. That's to how pay. rich people stay rich, I suppose. Yeah. 1866, Tennessee became the first Confederate state readmitted to the Union after the Civil War. They said, "Okay, but don't let it happen again. You guys <laughs> can come back in now." That's what you get for treason. 1880, the first commercial hydroelectric power plant in the world began generating electricity in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Wow. Why don't we do more of that? I don't know. We have hydroelectric plants still to this day, yeah, right? Yeah, I think so. Isn't Hoover Dam a hydroelectric yeah, uh, plant? Yeah. Yeah. We should use more of that I don't kind know. of stuff. We don't do things anymore. I know. 1917, on this day, July 24th, the trial of Mata Hari began in Paris. Oh, this is a great story. Why don't they make a new Mata Hari movie? She was an exotic dancer who was accused of spying for the Germans during World War I by using her seductiveness to oh. get secrets out of dudes. 
That, was there a movie before made about it? Yeah, there was one made in the 30s, maybe another one after that as well. Oh, but, they could make a much better one now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, we haven't yeah. seen the Matahari story in a while. Wow. Yeah, uh, she was uh, she was found guilty and uh, murdered by firing squad, if I remember Whoa. correctly. Yeah, it's got everything, that story. That's right? awesome. On this day in 1967, the first modern hospice was founded by Dr. Cicely Saunders in London, England. St. Christopher's was the name of it. Uh, Dr. Cicely Saunders was the founder, really, of modern palliative care and the hospice movement. Until then, there was no such thing. There wasn't a place where you could go just to live out your final days in in comfort and care. Well, not comfort, but, no, but in relative Try to make care. you as comfortable as possible. Exactly, yeah. Wow. That, was a, that was a new idea in the 60s. And this woman... This, as late as the 60s. Yeah. This woman was the one who pioneered it. So wow. she's a saint. On this day in 1969, Apollo 11 returned to planet Earth. Carrying those dudes, everybody who alive. Did that thing, yeah. Everybody alive, yeah. Eleven did. Eleven didn't go to the moon, did it? Yeah, it that did. Was, that actually, did go to. The the, moon. That's the one that landed on the moon. That was Apollo uh, Eleven. Was the one that uh, one so, small step. Right, right, okay. Two of the men who walked on the on the moon were in that capsule when it landed. Wow. How do you like to be the third guy in the mission? By the way, <laughs> really? Okay, we come all this way, and I got to stay in the car. Are you kidding <laughs> can me? At least spit from the can you <laughs> the ship? Can you get me a souvenir? Pick me up a rock or something, <laughs> will you? Buzz, you would Neil? think. To go all that way. I got fucked. And not get a, a piggy toe. That is some bullshit. On the moon. And imagine getting to the moon. And we talk about this often. I'm never not impressed by the fact that we were able to shoot something at the moon and land on it. That's madness. Yeah. But then they got back in the thing and they turned around and they were able to come back to the planet and land in the ocean, not in New York City, not in Times Square. (laughs) They were able to pick their spot. Landed in the ocean, and then they came and got him. That's amazing. It's ridiculous. We take it so much for granted these days, but that is a monumental yeah, achievement. We don't do stuff anymore. We do not do things anymore. 1979 on this day, July 24th, Ted Bundy was found guilty of murdering two sorority sisters. And although the exact number of his victims is unknown, Bundy confessed to more than 30 murders. So there's probably more where that Oh, I'm sure there's from. more than 30. Yeah, weirdo. He was executed in the electric chair on January 24th, 1989. So found guilty in 79, not uh, given the big zap until 1989. I hope it was super painful. I do too. Whatever that was, it wasn't enough. Speaking of awful people, on this day in 1993, I don't do a lot of baseball news because you know baseball blows. (laughs) But this, I remember this distinctly. 1993, Vince Coleman, who was a New York Met at the time, injured... Three Dodger fans when he threw a cherry bomb into a crowd as there were a bunch of people waiting for autographs outside Dodger Stadium. Do you remember, remember that event? I don't event? remember that. He this lit guy, a cherry bomb and tossed it in the crowd. Yes, this guy was a consummate asshole. Even his own teammates didn't like him. Wow. Three weeks prior to that event, he was swinging a golf club in the clubhouse and he nailed Dwight Gooden in the arm ah. and injured him. And then, I'm uh, not three weeks, three months later, he was charged with endangerment when he threw a cherry bomb into a crowd of fans waiting for autographs at the Dodger Stadium parking lot. What a dick. One of the injured was a two-year-old girl named Amanda Santos. Oh, my God. Yeah, this guy was a prick. Give that guy the chair, too. <laughs> right, while we're at it, while the chair's still warmed <laughs> well, it's up. It's warm. Uh, and then this day in 2018, this was pretty exciting, the first bison was born in Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada, 140 years after being reintroduced to that park, they finally had a bison that was born there in the park, and there was much rejoicing. You ever been to Banff? I've never been it's to Banff. It's a beautiful, beautiful park. Um, beautiful. I'm trying to think if I've ever been to Alberta. Oh, really? You've been to Calgary? You've been to Calgary. Didn't you do an HBO? Oh, in Calgary? yeah, 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 Calgary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like right outside of Calgary. Yeah, well, I've been there for work, but I've never been yeah. there to sort of travel and see. I did some comedy up there, and I took a, ran a car and went like an hour and a half because everybody said how beautiful Banff is, and it's gorgeous. There you go. Yeah. A recommendation from Eddie Pence. Go, go to Banff. See Banff National First Park. First National Park in Canada, I believe. Huh. Now, it's true. That one's true. Are you sure? I'm positive. I'm not going to regret. No. Not putting the show no. on hold First and double National checking Park you. You know that. In Canada. Yes. Okay, I'm going to let it slide. <laughs> and if it comes back and bites me in the ass tomorrow, a bunch of ang- angry Canadians are leaving oh, messages oh. setting you straight. Eh? It's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> I just want you to know that. Uh, and uh, speaking of Eddie Pence, you know, I save the food related days in history for the end because. It's always fun to see if Eddie Pence eats something or not. Yesterday, we got lucky. We found out he ate at Arby's. I do. This is also fast food related. On this day in 2018. Odds are good. 
Yeah, I guess so. If we, go, if we stick with the fast food, we're in pretty good shape. <laughs> On this day in 2018, there was an extensive test of accuracy amongst drive throughs at fast food joints. Okay. It was a study of fast food joints. To get your order correct. To get it correct. They did various types of studies. They did... Uh, um, how long it took you to get your meal, yeah. depending on what time of day it is. They found often it's much quicker to go into the restaurant I sometimes just do than that. it is to get yeah. in line at the drive through depending on the time yeah. of day. But another test they did was accuracy. And this particular fast food establishment mastered that test with 97.3% accuracy in all their orders that went through the drive through wow. on this day in 2018. That fast food joint was Chick-fil-A. Now, the question is, Eddie Pence eats Arby's, but does he eat Chick-fil-A? Because, you know, there's like all kinds of political ramifications, apparently, if you eat a Chick-fil-A, too. <laughs> some people don't like it because they're sort of Christian conservatives. And there's some people say, I won't eat there because I believe uh, homosexuals should have a good time or whatever they say. <laughs> but I don't I don't politicize fast food. I eat what tastes good. and I like Chick-fil-A. So I'll go there and eat there and I, I'll pick my fights elsewhere. The question is not about me. It's about Eddie Pence. So what we're going to do is pull the handle of the patented Eddie Pence jackpot slot machine. And we're going to see if that's something he eats or not. Who knows? He might not like it. Who knows? Let's find out. One chick, two chicks, three chick filets. Oh, it's two days in a row. I don't eat there. I don't, I don't eat there often. For political reasons. Oh, really? Yeah. You do? You actually do have a political that one. That one, because they're so hardcore about it. I've yes. eaten it before, and I it is good food. But it's it, delicious. It's, it's food. been a while since I've eaten it. Now, what is your real? What is the real threat Chick Fil A holds? Do you think when it comes to a progressive political I don't agenda? Know. And, and what it, sort of real sway? To do me, they it's have? weird. They're closed on Sundays. That just that weirds me out. But that's their thing. I know, but like it just like they have a they have a Chick Fil A in the stadium where the Atlanta Falcons play, and it's right. closed while the Atlanta Falcons play. But that, that doesn't that just, make any that sense to me. That hurts them. That doesn't hurt I anyone know. else. It's just like when you take it that far, I'm just like, eh, I just don't. It's too much. That, but that's dumb on them, right? That makes them dumb. It does, but you I... You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. But it's not hurting us in any it way. It doesn't. But, I mean, contrary to popular belief, I don't eat that much fast food, and I just sort of don't... I kind of avoid well, there's that. There's a lot place. of choices. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And I, I have no problem with someone who wouldn't eat Chick Fil A for moral purposes, I suppose. But I just, I've always been wondered. I've always been wondered. I've always, I've always wondered, wondered <laughs> what is the what is the real damage that they do? Is it because they donate a lot of money to uh, uh, anti homosexual stuff, anti abortion and like stuff, therapy, and things like that. It's conversion therapy. It's the is, money. So it's the money that they yeah, donate. I mean, they have a conversion problem. therapy is the the the, the no, dumbest an, and most evil thing. It's an awful thing. Absolutely. So people that actually donate to that. I try not to give money, but I think. You know, everything's owned by like four corporations anyway. So yeah, I mean, wherever you put in your money, it's going to something you don't like anyway. Corpor yeah, corporations so. are the bane of my existence, and I and I can see why you wouldn't want to spend money in a place that uh, supports causes that you don't believe in. But there are some people who are so adamant about it, I'm and not, if they like, took that same energy and focused it on other areas, yeah. Of the socio political world, I think they could make yeah. a real. And I'm impact. not hurting Chick fil A by not going that's there. I, I know that's that. That's my thought. So, but I just, I don't eat that much fast food and I just sort of drive by that one. But it is good. That's the problem. It I, is good. See, I think it's better for me to go there and eat there and bother them when I go there. <laughs> So what I usually do is I usually blow a guy while I'm eating the Chick-fil-A <laughs> right there in, in line. You put the uh, buffalo sauce on his penis? I do, yes. And I lick it off as I'm ordering, and it really wigs him out. I can tell you it makes him very uncomfortable. They still take your money, though. They do. They don't, they don't they mind. They still take your money. They take my gay dollars. They don't care. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Eddie Pence two days in a row is well, eating I'll shit. eat it. But... Oh, it's madness. It's it's. I don't crazy need time. it. I don't need it. It's a crazy time here at the Ralph Report. It is Port. wild. And that was This Day in History. I pity the fool who ain't been schooled by Ralph recently. He's dropping college-level knowledge with such accuracy. It got my head spinning faster than a drunk Eddie. And I'm rocking the back and track with a rap like a bad celebrity. I hope Cooperman loves my beats, because that rhymes with LMB. And that's a wrap for the Ralph Report today in history. Fifteen cents a day, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Hey there, it's Ralph Garman here. I hope you're enjoying the show. And if you are, why not subscribe to The Ralph Report so you can hear it every day, Monday through Friday. For just 15 cents a day, you can be a one-star general supporter, and that will get you the show in your ear holes Monday through Friday. Of course, there are two, three, and four-star general levels as well, 
which gets you more bonus content and more access to me. So if you like what you're hearing, why not subscribe? Go to patreon.com slash the Ralph Report. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash the Ralph Report. Subscribe today so you don't miss a thing. Now it's time for all the entertainment news with a segment I call the show Biz Beat. Well, it looks like accused pedophile singer R. Kelly is Piper. Not the Pied Piper. Oh. He's going to have to defend himself against federal sex crimes without the aid of his crisis manager, who has since quit the team. I would imagine. <laughs> as of Tuesday. You take on that much water, you might want to jump ship. Uh, his publicist, Daryl Johnson, stepped down this week for what his lawyer says are personal reasons. Uh-huh. Yeah, because R. Kelly is personally offensive. But look, this guy has been backing this guy all the way. That was his job. He's been fighting. Well, I'm saying, I don't know why you would, what's now the problem? Maybe he saw something finally. Maybe, Maybe he saw a piece of evidence. He's like, oh, look, okay. It's not like everyone didn't know this guy was guilty know, for a long time. If you're scumbag enough to take him on as a client and you're saying, okay, I don't care where my money comes from. How, what's what's the straw that broke the camel's well, back? Maybe it feels like it is getting to like it is the dam is getting ready to break on it. And he's like, I got to get out of this. Right Perhaps now. he's uh, he's a rat leaving a sinking ship. That's, yeah, basically. He went on CBS this week as well. He went on that morning show with uh, Gail King, the CBS morning show, and she asked him, which I thought was a great question: Would you leave your daughter alone with R. Kelly? Really? Yes. And he said, I wouldn't leave my daughter. With anyone, I'm so going to say it again, that's accused of being a pedophile, he said. So and he said, no, he would not leave his daughter alone with R. Kelly or any other accused pedophile, yeah. which makes perfect Total sense. Total sense. And then after he said that, he said, maybe I can no longer uh, do this any longer. Oh. So he jumped ship. Good. Good. It's good. The less defense that guy has, the better, in my opinion. Speaking of R. Kelly, you remember it was that docuseries at Lifetime that started shedding a lot of light yeah. on this Kind asshole. of brought it back. Yeah, I mean, the stories had always been there, but it really put a laser focus the heat on what was him. going on. They are doing a follow-up over there at Lifetime to um, <laughs> talk about the victims of what's happening since the story yeah. broke and what's happening now with the court case, which I think will also be a big hit. But now they're also doing a second docuseries entitled Surviving Jeffrey Epstein. Where oh. They're going to look at that piece of shit and all the underage girls that he used and oh. all the charges that are going to be brought against him, I which hope. I love. Anything that can turn up the heat on that oh. that piece of garbage. I hope he brings, it brings everybody down. That'll be even better. That so, whole circle of sick fucks. Yeah, all those rich fuckers who think they can do whatever they like with no I consequences. And I don't care what side of the political aisle you're I don't on, either. you go down. If it's down. Bill Clinton, he should fry. If it's uh, anyone else uh, to the left or the right, no quarter given to pedophiles yeah. on any level. That is not political no, at all. It's not. It's a nonpartisan issue. As is fighting in Disneyland, by the way. No fighting in Disneyland. Do you have an update on that? I do. The DA finally filed charges against those three people who got into a giant fist oh, fight man. in Toontown. Don't be punching each other at Toontown. First of all, the worst section of Disneyland is Toontown. Yeah. Smells well, like diapers. Yeah, it's well, it's for little ones. I know. And they it's had awful. little ones, and I, that's even worse a reason. I felt so bad for that little kid. For them start oh throwing haymakers at each other. One dude just beating up on his girlfriend. Oh. That's the guy who got the worst of it. Good. 35-year-old Avery Robinson. He was hit with five felony counts for allegedly beating up his girlfriend. Well, he kept screaming he was ready to go to jail. Yeah, he kept saying, I'm ready to go to jail tonight. Good. Which is a very bold statement <laughs> to say while you're beating up your girlfriend, but... I think when he's actually in jail, he might be saying something else. Piece of shit. He's charged also with domestic battery and assault with a deadly weapon. And um, since it was his kid who was in the middle of that oh, fight, by the so way. So bad for that kid. Along with three other children who witnessed what was going on. He's also been charged with child abuse and endangerment. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't end there because Disneyland security ordered Robinson out of the park, as you can imagine. It was at that point he allegedly tried to hit a Disneyland employee with his car and then threatened to kill his sister and her husband. So he is facing upwards of seven years in prison. Do you know what happened? What started the fight? Is there I anything? I don't that... know what the motivation God, was. It was brutal. I heard some, they ran out of churros. That's what I heard. There was there was a <laughs> no, shortage at okay. the churro stand. It all makes sense now. And there was one churro left. That makes sense. And really, the it's survival age. of the fit, fittest at that point you just have to whatever it takes to get your hands on you that sweet sweet churro i don't right? blame him so much now yeah 
More on the uh, scumbag list here. This guy was arrested near Taylor Swift's home this week. This is my favorite story. His name is uh, David Page Little. He was arrested uh, Friday, apparently, last Friday. 32-year-old man who was acting suspicious outside of Taylor Swift's home. The neighbors quickly called the police, and when they arrived, he said he had just gotten into town from Nashville, and he was trying to catch up with Taylor. Oh, is that they all? They were old That's friends, just... and he wanted to pay her a visit <laughs> so she could help him with his music career. Right, okay. And uh, the police say, um, well, okay, let's take a look in your backpack, if you don't mind, since you're just going to pay uh-huh. uh, Taylor a visit. Inside there, they found a metal baseball bat, 30 lock picks. A crowbar, gloves, flashlight, screwdrivers, and my favorite, a rake. So well, maybe he's part of a jug band. <laughs> maybe that's it. That's his music. He plays the crowbar. Is that what you think? <laughs> um, no, they say he was looking probably to break and enter her home and steal, steal from her. You yeah. think? It might have been the thirty lock picks they gave him away, <laughs> and the rake, of course. The rake. Yeah. You know what they use the rake for? What? to cover up their footprints oh, outside windows. That's smart. How about that? Just tie it to the back of your belt <laughs> as you walk around. I don't know if they do that. <laughs> but when you're standing at a window and you're breaking it in, you leave the feet print right. in the dirt. And they can... When they come back out, they rake the uh, dirt so mm. that the feet, the footprints aren't wow. uh, aren't uh, usable against like them. 30 lock pits, lock picks, then a baseball bat. If it yeah, work. well, just in case something goes south, you want to be able to protect yourself. And this guy is the Ralph Report Citizen of the Week. Thanks to Don Elliott who sent me this story. Since recreational marijuana became legal in Canada in 2018, you can purchase weed online. But of course, you have to do it according to the law. So you have to verify who's buying the weed. You have to be at least eight, excuse me, 19 years old and a Canadian citizen. So you have to give them your ID. And one guy this week tried to game the system by using... Did you see this story? No, no. Thor's ID to buy weed. Thor Odinson? Yes. It was a Canadian driver's license that had a photo of Chris Hemsworth in the corner, and the name on the ID was Thor Thunder Odinson. He claimed to be 49 years old, and it gave his address. Well, the age, the age is way off because he's 1,500 years exactly, old. Exactly, way off. But he gave his address as... <laughs> 69 Big Hammer Lane. <laughs> oh, you got to give him all the weed. Sadly, they turned down his request to, no. order, to order weed online. Give that yes. dude all the weed. I live at 69 Big Hammer Lane. Big Hammer Lane. <laughs> Ooh, that was my favorite. Uh, speaking of Disney stuff, a lot of people are upset oh. that Wesley Snipes is no longer Blade. Have you seen these people? Yeah. They're outraged, Eddie. Why? More outrage. Why? It's a great casting choice. It's a great tra- casting choice. And thank God Wesley Snipes has stepped forward and he said he is thrilled for Mahershala Ali, who will be playing Blade in the uh, the new version. He said, to all the day walkers losing their minds right now, chillax, such as the business of entertainment, much peace to the MCU crew, always a fan. And he called Mahershala Ali a beautiful and talented artist whose expressions I look forward to experiencing for many years to come and that he hoped to work with him. Someday. I bet they have so. him cast in that movie in some role. I think he's got to have a cameo or I'm something, I'm sure he right? will. Look, I don't blame them for moving on. you got to reinvent you, this you got, stuff, yeah. you know? I mean, they did it with, they brought J. Jonah Jameson back. Yeah, but, but that's hardly... That's, yeah, it's a minor Yeah, that's, not, that's a, I'm not a lead actor. Uh, while we're talking about movies, Sylvester Stallone is furious. He did an interview with Variety saying he's really upset that he doesn't own a piece of Rocky. He doesn't have any ownership in the Rocky movies. Really? Yeah. It was basically a work for hire. He wrote Rocky. They purchased it from him and then produced it. Right. But he has no ownership stake in oh. the character itself. So all the merchandising and things that go on, yeah. he doesn't get any of that. Aww. He's sad he's not richer <laughs> off of the poor Rocky guy. franchise. Guy. And I, I get it. I get understand why that might stick in his craw in a little bit. But he's got so yeah. much money. It'd be different if you were broke and your career never worked out after that. Right. And I could see you being upset, but I mean. He's not living in a trailer park. No. This guy has so <laughs> much money. Does he own Rambo? I, I believe he does. Okay, I think the well, second time around, he was a little wiser. I mean, I can understand not wanting to own your, you know, regretting not having ownership of your creation. Like That's Rock, what like he a character says. like Rocky. He says, but. does it bother you guys that I've written every word, I choreographed it, 
I've been loyal to you. I promoted it, directed it, and I don't have one percent that I can leave for my children. That's what he said apparently oh, to United. His kids artists. are going to starve. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, I don't feel bad. Anymore. He claims because he created the character and the franchise that he should have a one percent of everything that they make should be left to him in perpetuity. That's what he thinks. Yeah, but like that's the situation when you're trying to struggle and you make it. And that was his first thing that kind of broke him through. You sometimes have to sign away that stuff just to get the opportunity. Yes. To Had get your he foot in said, the door. "I want a piece of this product," at the stage he was in, he never a nobody that no one had ever heard of selling a script that was that was barely made that he got to be the lead actor in that was that was your 1% that was your 1% your deal was that you didn't have to give up your your dreams and watch someone else play the right. character that you invented that's a, in yeah. retrospect it's much easier to say i should have made other choices right. but, but he the, did the best he those could those are the compromises you make to get your foot in the door and i don't know if i mentioned this or not but he has so much money <laughs> that it's hard for me to feel yeah, sorry but, for that. But the that's guy. his money. What are his kids going to do? I know. Well, maybe he could take all the money he has and then just leave it in a box somewhere <laughs> when he's dead. And then they'll have so much money. <laughs> oh, stop it, NBC. They have just announced the air date of the 2020 Miss America. Haven't we? That's things still going on? Yes. By the way, now they call it, it's not a pageant anymore. Now it's now the 2020 Miss America competition. Oh, uh, that, not a that changes things. Look, I like pretty girls as much as anyone. But haven't we evolved to a place where you can't really trot 51 women out on stage and compare them against each other yeah. and then give one a crown and yeah. a sash? Doesn't yeah. that just seem like the most archaic thing in the world it right now? It seems like we're past that. And they say, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a scholarship competition. It's a talent competition. No, you're putting them in evening dresses and you put them out there and they all got to walk up and down. It's like a cattle show. Yeah. It's madness. I mean, you, there's no men involved. Right. Right? Yeah. So it's obviously a certain pageant. That's a something certain competition. to do with vaginas. It's got something to do with a, that much. a certain sex. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And I don't know anybody who watches or cares anymore. Why are they still doing it? It seems like so 70s. Let it go. <laughs> like 60s or 70s. Let it be like polio. Let it be just a footnote in our history. Let's get a Miss America vaccine and let's all get <laughs> our injections. Vaccinated. Yes. And lastly, Lindsay Lohan is in the news. Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. She's got a new job. Man, just when you think she's unhirable, Dude. she pulls something out of her ass. She's. Freddy Krueger. She's Jason Voorhees, man. <laughs> she, is, she is now one of the judges on the Australian version of The Masked Singer. Ugh. She will be a panelist on that show, guessing who is under the mask. <laughs> you can't on kill that her show. off, man. But at least I'm glad it's all everything I hate in one package. It's <laughs> Lindsay Lohan and The Masked Singer. I can just ignore her completely. Yeah. And it's in Australia, so I won't even <laughs> accidentally come across it. It's just perfect. She just landed down there, by the way, and she posted a greeting to all of Australia on her Instagram, mm. proving once again that she can't do accents. Good day, mates. I'm here in Australia. Good day, you mates. Oh. I'm in Australia. Oh. Oh. Is there nothing she can do? <laughs> Let's take a look at today's celebrity birthdays. All these stars born on this day, July 24th. Actor Mark Goddard from Lost in Space. Major Don West on that show. He's 83. Oh, yeah, I always loved him. He was always fighting with Dr. Smith on that show. Oh, oh, Major West. Oh. Shut up, Smith. You're finding yourself floating home. That was my favorite insult he used to say. <laughs> All right. Actor John Aniston from Days of Our Lives is 86 years old today. Father, of course, of Jennifer. Comedian Ruth Buzzy from Laugh-In is 83. Actor Chris Sarandon is 77 years old today. Comedian Gallagher is 73. Wow. Now, he's retired, right? Doesn't his brother do the act? I think he sold it to his brother, and then he took it back from his father. I don't, it's a shady oh, thing, but there was a rivalry, and I think he took it back to smash the watermelons. Well, no one can smash a watermelon That's like true. Gallagher. Can he even lift the uh, <laughs> sledge-o-matic anymore at 73? <laughs> Robert Hayes from Airplane 72. Michael Richards from Seinfeld is 70. Director Gus Van Zant is 67. Speaking of directors, Patty Jenkins, director of Wonder Woman and the upcoming Wonder Woman 84. She is 48 years old today. I can't wait for that next Wonder Woman. That's coming out in 2020, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Wonder Women, Linda Carter, Wonder Woman from the TV show, is 68 today. <laughs> Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. All the world is 
waiting for you And the power you possess In your satin tights Fighting for your rights And the old red, white, and blue You know that big uh, Crisis of Infinite Earths crossover yeah. that you're doing the WB, or the WB, used to be, the CW. 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 Um, I have heard rumors that she is also involved and will Linda be reprising Carter. her role as Wonder Woman. In oh, that. I'm, wow. Yeah. That's cool with that. That would be really cool. See her and Burt Ward together. All the old guard. I heard that Tom Welling from Smallville is also going to be on board. They should totally do that. Why not, right? Just bring everybody Everyone who's ever done a live action version of a DC comic superhero and bring them back. That'd be the best. Kadeem Harrison from A Different World is 54 years old today. Kristen Chenoweth is 51, as is Laura Layton from Melrose Place. Rose Byrne is 40. Summer Glau from Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, is 38 years old. Elizabeth Moss is 37. A lot of people pointed out to me after our Tom Cruise conversation. Elizabeth Moss, also a very potent Scientologist oh, as well. Didn't know that. And she stars in The Handmaid's Tale, which is about like repression of freedom and that stuff is like that. Strange. It's even a weirder project. That is very weird. For someone to be associated with who's uh, that uh, with that group. Anna Paquin is 37. Bindi Irwin, little Bindi the Jungle Girl, daughter of Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. She's 21. And lastly, boy, it's a big list. Actress, singer Jennifer Lopez is 50 years old today. I almost didn't have room to get her onto that list. That's how big today's birthday list is. It's crazy. I mean, we had uh, Bindi Irwin, for God's sakes. You got to mention her. You don't want to leave out uh, Summer Glau or Krista Sarandon. I mean, Carter. I just had to, I was going to have to draw the line somewhere. And I really said, well, maybe I can't. I just can't fit her in to celebrate her birthday. But then, you know what, Eddie Pants, it struck me in that moment. There's always room for J-Lo. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's it for today's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Ralph Garman. I walk the showbiz beat. And because it's Wednesday, oh, this is so much fun. We get to take a look back at one of the smash hit songs from yesterday. And that person never really had a follow-up. And so he's called a one-hit wonder. It's a one-hit wonder! One-hit wonder! One hit wonders. It's a very common tale. Well, as I mentioned yesterday, today we're going to talk about They're Coming to Take Me Away, haha, ha, the full name of the song. Wow. This is, uh, this is something <laughs> else. From 1966. <laughs> just goes to show you, not all the music of the 60s was classic. Uh. This was a novelty song that was a ridiculously popular song reaching the top 10 nationally in just its third week on the Billboard 100, wow, by that's the way. quick. Skyrocketed. It peaked at number three, sold over one million copies, and was awarded a gold record. <laughs> it's got a gold record. Oh, yeah. Sure it does. <laughs> number three here in the States. Uh, number two in Canada. Number four in the UK. This was an international Everywhere. smash. The song was recorded by an artist known as Napoleon the Fourteenth. His real name, however, was Jerry Samuels, and Jerry was a struggling singer-songwriter for many years. His career started in 1956 when he did a version of the song Puppy Love. He cut that for RCA Records and <laughs> went nowhere. No one was interested. So he was actually working at the Associated Recording Studios in New York City when he came up with the idea of a spoken word record about a guy who was going crazy, a very funny record, because, you know, this was the 60s when mental illness was still hilarious <laughs> and you could make fun of it in a novelty song. So he came up with They're Coming to Take Me Away. <laughs> and if you listen to the lyrics, it's about a guy who's been abandoned, who's losing his mind. And you can actually hear the uh, the sirens in the background. They're coming taking him to, away, putting him in a straitjacket and taking him to an institution because what is funnier really than having to be institutionalized for your hilarious. mental illness. Here's a little piece of They're Coming to Take Me Away, haha. -ha. Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I go berserk? Well, you left me anyhow and then the days got worse and worse and now you see I've gone completely out of my mind. And... They're coming to take me away, ha-ha, they're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, ha-ha! 
You thought it was a joke and so you laughed. You laughed when I had said that losing you would make me flip my lid. Right? right? You know you laughed. I heard you laugh. You laughed, you laughed and laughed and then you left. But now you know I'm utterly mad. And they're coming to take me away. Ha ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho ho. Hee hee. Ha ha. To the happy home with trees and flowers and chirping birds and basket weavers who sit and smile and twiddle their thumbs and toes and they're coming to take me away. That's a gold record. How was that number three? It was a huge success. Who would listen to that? More than half Come on, of that Eddie, song. That's so funny. Oh my god, he's going crazy. No wonder you were terrified by that song. Now Jerry Samuels, yes, we mentioned yesterday. As a child, my sister would play the forty-five, and I would burst into tears and run to my mother because I kept fearing that someone was coming to take me oh. away from my family. Uh, it was traumatic for me. Um, Jerry Samuels, a.k.a. Napoleon the Fourteenth, he, he was concerned that maybe people might think he was treating mental illness lightly. Uh -huh. So he wrote a third verse, Eddie, where you find out it's not a woman that has left him that made him crazy. Here's what happened. I cooked your food, I cleaned your house, and this is how you pay me back for all my kind, unselfish, loving deeds. <laughs> well, you just wait. They'll find you yet. And when they do, they'll put you in the ASPCA, you mangy mutt. And they're coming to take me away. Ha ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho ho. He -he. See? It was his dog ran away, and that's what made him crazy. Oh, so that makes God. it better. Oh, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Uh, here's Absolutely. the thing about the 45. It was first released as a single, okay? The opposite side of the 45. As if it wasn't disturbing enough, the song in its own right. The opposite side of the 45 was the exact same song, backwards. Oh my, what? And all the, what? all the printing on the label was also reversed. Oh, it's psychotic. So you could only read it in a mirror. To carry on with the insanity of this record, the other side was the same song, backwards. Oh, don't play it. It's even don't, more no, disturbing don't, don't play it. than it is forwards. Oh. <laughs> Tell me that's not the stuff of nightmares. That's utterly terrifying. Right? That's like carnival funhouse terrifying. <laughs> That's, oh my God. Well, Eddie, you'll be happy to know, much like Bobby Boris Pickett, Napoleon oh. the 14th was, <laughs> not. was not about to go quietly oh. into that good night. No. He released an entire album of mental illness related songs. Yeah, why not go with the hits? It was called They're Coming to Take Me Away, haha, -ha, which it featured that smash hit on there uh -huh. as well. But it also had I'm in love with my little red tricycle. Oh my god. Photogenic schizophrenic you, the love song, of course. Marching off to bedlam. Bats in my belfry. I live in a split level head. The nuts on my family tree. The place where the nuts hunt the squirrels. Whoa. And you'll be happy to know in trying to reproduce the magic of the coming to take me away, an answer song was produced <laughs> by Napoleon oh, featuring good. Josephine, where she says how happy she is that they took him away. And is the dog's point of view? I I see that's always bothered me because the dog is supposed to be the villain of the piece, but this right. is obviously a woman, and it sounds like she orchestrated the whole thing. <laughs> the dog <laughs> It's kind of terrifying. Oh, God. Here's Josephine singing, I'm happy they took you away. Ha ha. Remember when I ran away and you got on your knees and begged me not to leave because you drove the sack? Well, you thought you had me fooled, but I just left you anyhow because I knew you were already out of your mind. Ah, I'm happy they took you away. Ha ha. I'm happy they took you away. Hoo hoo. Hee hee. Ha ha. To the funny part. When life's hysterical all the time And you'll be sorry I sent those nice young men in their clean white coats And I'm happy they took you away <laughs> Yeah that's anxiety inducing. That uh, didn't have near the success of the no. original. And why does the dog way. sound crazy? Is it crazy as a guy who's 
being why, institutionalized. And why is the dog happy? And is it a dog or is it a woman? And why does she have a French accent? Uh, it's a French poodle. Yeah, but Napoleon's French too. He didn't have a French accent. <laughs> well, that wasn't his real name. Oh my God. The whole thing <laughs> is just a big ball of, of neuroses oh. on vinyl. He has no history of a mental illness. Like he never. No, he, apparently he's still yeah. working today, Eddie, as a singer and also a talent agent booking acts into the uh, the area around Philadelphia, believe it or not. Really? That's what's going on with Jerry Samuels these days. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if he still has any any requests to get up there on stage and <laughs> do that smash hit song. <laughs> They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. Oh. There's right now, if you listen closely, you can hear a singer songwriter that listens to this show slowly tying a noose <laughs> because they said, if that guy can make a hit record <laughs> and I'm still struggling, there is no God. Oh, it was a different time, my friends. Oh, man. Different it was. Time. You could you could have a hit song with something like that. Yeah. Craziness. Anyway, that's it for today's One Hit Wonder. It's the One Hit Wonder. One Hit Wonder. One Hit Wonders. It's a very common tale. That's it for today's show. Tomorrow, of course, is Thursday. That means we fling open the doors of that Institute of Learning Ralph Sex University. Again, we've given away our secret. Yeah, what we we're have. going to be talking about this week, we're going to be dealing with pansexuality. Actress Bella Thorne has come forward and announced she is no longer bisexuality or bisexual. She doesn't consider herself bisexual. She now considers herself pansexual. What does that mean? Well, we'll break it all down for you tomorrow. So come on back, won't you? I love you. I mean it. Bye.